I studied its evolutionary origin, nutritional profile, and ate nothing but beef for two straight months to answer the question, is beef a superfood? Webster's Dictionary defines superfood as... it doesn't because this dictionary was printed before the term was made up to sell foods that make children want to cry. You might think of a superfood as something that provides you with the most nutritional value in the least number of calories while preventing disease, and we'll get to that description in a moment, because I believe that to earn the prefix super, a food should be providing us with new powers, which most other species on this planet probably already think we have. Before we became sapiens, we shared a common herbivorous ancestor with the other great apes. While our closest relatives are still eating plants and stuck in the jungle, we're now manufacturing meat and no longer stuck to this planet. These supernatural abilities come from our large brains, which may be the direct product of eating red meat. About two and a half million years ago, we begin seeing evidence of hunting through weapon impacts in fossilized animal bones, and evidence of meat consumption through nitrogen-15 isotope testing in fossilized human bones. Around this same time is when the human brain starts exploding in size, transforming us from great apes to early humans, to homo sapiens. Controlling the elements, communicating telepathically, and flying across the globe are just a few of the superpowers provided by our minds which were made by meat. And while there are alternative hypotheses for why our brains hit this exponential growth curve, we know for sure that large brains require more calories and micronutrients, which animal foods provide in abundance. Millions of years spent eating meat may have provided us with brains capable of harnessing technological superpowers, but can eating beef increase our biological power level in the present day? A time when too many calories is finally a bigger problem than too few, yet nutrient deprivation remains an issue. Fortunately, our brains are capable of answering the same questions that they ask, in this case by studying the foods that made us human. We consider plants like blueberries and kale to be superfoods because they provide a wide array of micronutrients and disease-preventing antioxidants through very few calories. Not only does beef have a larger variety of micronutrients in a more bioavailable form, but it contains compounds that are barely accessible or not available in other foods. A few beginning with the letter C include choline, carnosine, cobalamin, and creatine, which has been proven to increase muscle strength and intelligence, bringing us closer to that higher power level. While plant superfoods are praised for their antioxidants, most of these compounds are actually pro-oxidants that cause our body to increase its production of natural antioxidants, including glutathione and superoxide dismutase. What are these antioxidants made from? Precursors that we find abundant in beef. Despite being a staple of our diet for more than two million years, most people still think that eating too much red meat will cause heart disease, cancer, and lead to early death. But health authorities are reversing their position on beef because studies linking red meat to these ailments are flawed with bad data, selection bias, and healthy user bias. Now the scales are tipping so far in the other direction that people are claiming to cure their diseases by eating nothing but meat. I eat beef and salt. So here's what happened. Depression is gone, I don't have psoriasis, and my gum disease is gone. The additional nutrition and possible disease prevention come with the cost of more calories than other superfoods, but that's because beef provides every essential amino and fatty acid making beef the only superfood to provide us with nearly, if not every nutrient that we need to survive. With other foods, you still need to get these essential acids from other calories, which might explain why people who eat nothing but beef seem to be losing more weight than people on almost any other diet. Okay, so I was weighing in at 225 before starting the carnivore diet. Wow, just below 214 pounds. I haven't been that light in quite some time. So I started off about 212. I'm gonna weigh in whew, about 206. So as you can see, we both lost a pretty decent amount of weight. But transitioning into a new species over thousands of generations or surviving in the present day aren't my highest dietary priorities. What if we want a super food that will turn us into super sapiens, increasing our intelligence and improving our athleticism? To answer this question, I bit the bullet and decided to start a diet consisting solely of beef. How did it go? Well, the first few weeks I did everything possible to distract myself from the diet, and it was still so terrible that I decided to just give up eating anything so that when I could get back to eating one thing, it might be a little bit easier. Well, I did it. Seven days, no food, back to eating. 
Seems strange. And surprisingly, this desperate attempt actually worked. Job well done, because I am dying for a bite of steak right now. Since then, it's been way easier to avoid all the temptations. I thought my first meal last night would be a ravenous feast, but I had a couple of pieces of food and felt satisfied. Even a small portion of beef seems to be providing me with a massive amount of nutrition. It might be placebo, but when I was eating earlier, it felt like I was taking a multivitamin. Like the food was just nutrients being filtered into my body. A pure shot of nourishment is exactly how a super food should feel, but this sensation is vanishing almost as quickly as it arrived. I'm already at the point where yesterday I was eating beyond what I was hungry for. My body might be recognizing that it's been deprived of nutrients because my appetite is finally starting to return. I'm really starting to develop a taste for this grass-fed beef. I haven't been able to stop myself from eating for the last two days now. I might be feeling the urge to eat more food, but it's also interesting that I'm not gaining that much weight despite probably eating more than 4,000 calories a day. Even today, over a month after I finished fasting, I still find beef satisfying enough to prevent cravings for other foods, but not satiating enough to ever feel like I want to stop eating. I feel like I can just keep eating in perpetuity, never stopping because I'm never feeling completely full. Full, but my insatiable appetite might indicate a lack of some nutrients. Yet at the same time, I actually lost weight yesterday despite eating more food than I've eaten in three months. The all beef diet clearly demonstrates that we don't need to fear the calories from red meat alone. Although I have been having a very hard time getting work done lately. Maybe the cognitive benefits take generations to feel unlike the immediate pain from the crippling cramps. Biggest downside that I've experienced so far is the worst leg cramp that I've experienced in possibly my entire life. Beef exceeds every qualification that you would need to earn the title of superfood. But being a superfood doesn't mean that it's the only food we need if we want to thrive. Red meat is low in some vitamins, including biotin, and lacks some minerals, including calcium. When our ancestors were busy hunting to build their brains, they weren't just eating the muscle meat. They put every part of that animal to use. Eating organs seems intolerable to most modern day sapiens, including myself, but I'm willing to sacrifice taste if the result is becoming a super sapien. Which is why my mission for next week is to start eating nature's multivitamin, beef organs. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to follow along as I build my diet from the foundation of no food adding one ingredient at a time, investigating its evolutionary origin and nutritional profile to find the optimal diet. And you might be wondering about the ethics of eating nothing but beef. I strongly believe that factory farming is one of, if not the greatest atrocity of modern society, and future generations will look back and judge us with disdain. I prefer to get my meat from healthy animals raised at local farms by shopping with True Local. True Local sources meats from farms near you and delivers it to your door so that you can avoid factory farming while eating healthy food. Thank you all for watching and I'm excited to continue sharing this journey with you.